So, as you get more familiar with Houdini, you'll want to create models even more efficient, efficiently. So let's say we want to create box and make it a long one and maybe not so thick like this. But this position for this model is not very optimal for further manipulation because it's not on top of the grid. It's it's right in the middle, it abstracts part of the object and I like to work with grid on and this make it very weird. You don't really have any idea where you are. So actually Houdini has a note for that, it's called match size. It basically takes anything that you put in, pipe into it, takes a bounding box and justifies it. So let's take a look at the axis. This is our z-axis and we want to justify it to the right. Well I, I like to work in z-axis so let's go to the z and let's take them in. As you can see our box is now moved and starts right at the zero. And also we want to move it on Y and want to move it on top. So let's go back to the min on Y and you can see now the object starts right at the zero, right at the middle of X because we didn't change it. We also can change it but I like the middle. And now we can much easier create our models. One thing, one of the few things, many things that's good about this is because we can easily see the visually how long is our object. So we can see on the grid it's 10. Let's go back and say it's 10. It's very easily seen. We can easily see it. So let's do something with it. So let's say I want to create this weapon rail that's usually on weapons. For that, let's just extrude. Let's extrude it by, actually not extrude. First of all, we want to, let's bevel it. And I like my profile to be at the X axis. So I always know what button to press and what's perspective front, right or whatever. Let me make it like that. And right now we have to create the base for this. This weapons part is like where all the attachments goes, like a site and something like that. So let's extrude it. The bottom also by negative 0 0.3. So this is our baseline shape. And if we go to the match size, you can see that it's perfectly placed on an, on our position. And let's go back to the poly extrude. And you want to create it smaller. It's we can see that it automatically changes the size of it. And we don't have to manually change the positions of it because without this we would have to move it, if we extrude the bottom, we have to move it again on top for the object to be on it, on top of the grid. Let's make the shape a little bit more interesting. Let's make Gullians. So, that's the wrong one. Turn to box. Let's move it here. With grid snapping, let's put it in here. Position it one on the width and with points, let's put it in here. Make sure it captures all the all of it. But for that, we want to fuse this point because we beveled, and these points actually they were actually two points go here and if you take a look you can see there are two points they didn't fuse together so after fuse it's one point 
that makes our boolean not no not so confused so now we have this boolean let's put down merge node and duplicate let's go to the side and as you can see sometimes when you're not sure how much you want to duplicate it so that they're the same space let's go here and so it's very close to the 0 0.4 so that's how you know and how many copies you want you want a little bit of space in, at the end so but let's presume let's presume we want it a little bit shorter in here well it's no problem we can go back to the box and you can change the size of it and to make a padding here bigger we can go to the copy the box itself and make it in here like that so we can make it let's go back to the box and extend it to 10 like that and now let's let's say we want to this weapon part is going to be like on the on the handguard of the weapon so let's put down transform and this can be at any position it can be like that maybe not the most logical position and let's put down a template flag with selectable template flag selectable template flag is basically you go here go to the purple node and control click it that's going to make it so we can select anything else but we can still see the whole geometry of this template flag so and let's change it let's change our booleans as you can see they update together let's go back to the box maybe make it even bigger so this basically means we can make our edits at a very convenient place for us and then place the object anywhere we want where it makes sense for the weapon to be have a lot of these template flags selected we can actually get rid of them with the hotkey for me it's control F10 like that so just go to the hotkey manager type in template and this is the clear our templates control F10 you can make it whatever you want so basically you have to be in a viewport Let's make these templates. So right now it's pretty confusing to watch what's what. So you just click. You just click the hotkey in the viewport and it cleans them all out. That's very convenient. So let's make this boolean a little bit more interesting. Let's create cylinder. Uh, actually it's called two. So, for us to orient this piece, we could do it by hand, but for Houdini, there are a better way to orient this on top of our rail. So, if you right click on Manipulator, you won't see this option. You can see this option only in Transform. You can set on where it is start orientation picking but it actually can be assigned to a hotkey start orientation picking so assign this hotkey I have vote so assign them to vote so basically we all need this 
let's go to our boolean let's make it a template flag let's press the hard key as you can see it changes to this and not these boxes on the each axis actually there's a tooltip underneath so basically you control click on the axis whichever you want it to be a primary one so let's say we want to orient this bottom of the cylinder on top of this so you click on this and when we hover over the object we can see it actually highlights the normal direction and we just press this as you can see just aligns it make it smaller move it in or whatever and subtract it as you can see it works perfectly let's duplicate it to the other side like that do this again go to the tube select the hard key Like the hard key and now let's we want to lay it on the on the ground so let's select the X and press it again like that as you can see it works and also well this isn't the best object you can use this example but once you do it one time you can press hard key again and this time you can choose the secondary axis so Let's say you want to X align it with this point. So you just press on the Z axis and hold it to the points. It snaps automatically. So we can also align it with secondary axis. Which for now it's not very useful, but it's good to know that it's an option. And let's make this tube. 10 and we can put down the match I have a preset for the same one and actually the match also has a basic move handle so you can see that it pastes perfectly boolean at the same length that's it for now Take care.